All right, everybody, welcome back. Welcome back to Cigar Sherpa. I'm your man, Laird Mayhew, coming at you on this fine North Carolina day. We got clear skies, a crisp 45 degrees, and a great cigar for you today. Out of the Rocky Patel factory, I'm bringing you the Hamlet 25th anniversary. I'm looking forward to this cigar. I have not tasted it yet. It'll be my first time, so stay tuned. All right, all right, all right. Like I said, I will be reviewing the Hamlet 25th year anniversary uh, by Rocky Patel. Uh, a little bit about this cigar. Uh, Hamlet Paredes, Paredes, I don't know. I can't pronounce his last name. I don't remember, but a guy named Hamlet. I guess he left Habano, S.A., uh, in 2015, the Cuban uh, cigar company, the national company, um, he left there. I went to work for Rocky Patel, came up with all you know different blends. I'm sure you guys are familiar with them. Um, throughout his experiences with customers, he kept hearing from customers to asking if he was ever going to make a lighter blend or, or a mid-range blend, not not as heavy as he was doing. And and I guess after being bombarded with these questions he decided for his 25th year in the business the anniversary he would make a cigar that was curtailed to those tastes i don't understand why anybody would ask for that but that's just me i am a full bodied full strength roundhouse kick to the face cigar guy so anyway what it's got here we got an ecuadorian habano wrapper and interestingly he's got a pennsylvania broadleaf binder so that should give it a little sweetness um, and then of course it's got Nicaraguan fillers so there you go um, beautiful cigar very well made I think I got I, well actually I got this one at the Rocky Patel booth in Las Vegas at the Cigar Aficionado Big Smoke um, but I believe it goes for about $8.50 so it's not a super high priced cigar but it is pricey but for me it falls into the daily arsenal of cigars uh once they get above 10 bucks I, I don't know something with my emotionally it becomes a more expensive cigar and usually if it's below five five and a half bucks uh, i've only found like one or two that i really enjoy that are below that that price range and i'll probably snap a review on them just you know to give you guys some options and i will review bundle cigars too so um, I'm always looking for a good deal. Anyway, back to this thing. The wrapper is slightly oily. Uh, well, you really probably can't see it too well, but the seams are visible. Uh, one looks a little loose down here at the end. or But uh, it's got a triple cap on it. Very well done. Looks like I have a split. Where's my camera? There we go. Over here, got a split right there. That could be from me. Um, I've had this thing for about two months, and earlier today, whenever I got it out of the humidor, I stuck it in my teeth, and you know, I, sometimes I do that. So we'll see if that becomes an issue. Um, anyway, uh, it smells really good. Uh, it's got a tobacco, of course. Cedar, cedar. Well, you know what? I got some ink on my hands. So <laughs> that's probably going to throw it off. But right here at the foot, I kind of get some some hay, which I, which I like. I'm a big fan of the Hayfield Barnyard Spicy Cigar, which I, I imagine this is going to have some spice to it because it reminds me it's reminiscent of Cuban tobacco. And I'll get into Cuban cigars on a whole different level because that's always the question. But um, let's go ahead and cut this thing up. So I'm going to use my guillotine here this is my well it's not even a brand I, I got it from the local brick and mortars here Anstead Cigar which is a great place so if you're in the North Carolina area and you're passing through Fayetteville definitely check them out uh, again I'm not paid by them I'm not working for them they're just a good local business that I recommend so let's get that thing cut up again oh not bad see that little split right there that might be an issue but What am I getting there? 
it's cedary. <coughs> uh, now a little bit of chocolate there. Just in the background. A little sweetness too. I don't know. Maybe like raisin. Uh, candy. I don't know. That's interesting. Let's see how it... Anyway, let's get this thing lit up and uh, get into it and see how it is. So again, I'm using the Vertigo, which I heard somebody call the AK-47 of cigar lighters, and I totally agree. And if you're not familiar with guns, the AK-47 is known as a assault rifle or rifle that you can pretty much leave laying around, leave it outside, probably go to the Ho Chi Minh Trail in Vietnam right now and find one that's laying in the mud since the Vietnam War and pick it up and it'll fire. Clean it off, knock the dust out, so. And they're economically priced. So, ooh, I scorched the wrapper a little bit. Oh well, maybe y'all won't see it. Mm. Where's that split? So right away, I'm getting wood, cedar, cedar wood, but wood and good pepper, like, whew, in the retro hail. Let me roll my truck window down. Let's see. Good to, it draws good. I think that little split right there may be causing me a little bit of a draw issue, but I'm not going to blame the manufacturer that. I'll try to put my tongue on there to kind of keep the smoke funneling back but the draw is perfect on this thing mm. getting good smoke oh there's a little chocolate flavor right there just in the background there is a good I'm going to say like grass and hay type flavor normally for me whenever I smoke a Cuban cigar the the taste that I really like about it is that grassy hay kind of musty flavor that all Cuban tobacco has and what it's known for. Um, cigars like the Last Call by AJ Fernandez. I, the first time I smoked that, it was given to me, no band on it, and right away I thought it was a Cuban cigar. I swore it was a Cuban cigar. I was willing to bet money it was a Cuban cigar until a buddy of mine showed me that it wasn't, and now that's one of my favorite cigars. So. Yes, I am a fan of the Cuban tobacco. Do I think it's the best? No, um, not at all. But it is, for what it is, it's good. So, anyway. Good smoke. It's kind of flat. Uh, it's not creamy yet. Uh, I don't, you know, like I said, I don't know if it's going to, but it's pretty good. I got good tobacco, earthy flavor. Um, it is it is medium flavored, but the body of it is probably more medium to full. It's it's got a good strength to it. It's got a really good spice on the retro hail. Um, it just kind of lingers in there, so it's got a strong spicy finish in the retro hail. As far as the palate, it's got a woody cedar taste, so that's prominent there. There's a very slight sweetness. So, you know, I'm going to take that back. Let's take that sweetness away. Maybe I'm wanting to to uh, taste that. But anyway, let's go ahead. I'm going to get into this thing. Like I said, it takes, for me, it takes about a good inch into the cigar. Let it heat up um, and let it do it with the blenders. Uh, when Hamlet and Rocky Patel, whoever blended this thing, when they blended it, they, you know, they blend it to a taste. Not that you're going to get right off the first light so so far it's a good medium bodied cigar strength wise it's probably a little up there in the uh, mid to high because it is peppery um, if you don't like a peppery cigar probably not for you but it is definitely uh, an answer to the request of a more medium bodied cigar as to what Hamlet and Rocky Patel normally put out um, so far it's burning pretty good I said it's not razor sharp but I did I did kind of 
mess up the the light it was kind of scorched there i didn't do it perfectly and you know that happens but it is burning it's smoking there is not a lot of foot smoke coming off the cigar which i like which i like a lot i like to get mm, i like to get smoke when i puff on it but when it's sitting in my hand i don't like it to be going off like a roadside flare which I'm, and I'll get into that another at another time. I'm not a big fan of Drew Estate cigars. I know everybody is a big fan of theirs. I don't dislike the company. I'm not a big fan of their cigars. And one of my biggest issues with their cigars is that foot smoke. I mean, it just you 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 have the cigar sitting in your fingers, and it just every cigar I've ever smoked, I feel like there's something wrong with it. But uh, anyway, I'll get into that at, at another point when I do some Drew Estate reviews. But so far, the Rocky Patel. Or Hamlet 25th Anniversary Master of Tobacco, which I have no doubt the guy is. Um, every cigar I've ever smoked from him has been good. A little lighter than I like, but I'm going to enjoy it. So y'all sit back, whatever you're smoking on, smoke it. And uh, I'll come back when we get it into the first third of the cigar, about the halfway point, And I'll take notes and let you know how I think about it. All right. Okay, so back, we are past the first third of the cigar, and we are going into just about the halfway point. Um, uh, burn's not bad. It's not razor sharp. It was burning really good. Um, I had a phone call, so I had to pull over business. Like I said, I, this, is my, this is my office, pretty much, uh, my truck. So I had it kind of clenched in my teeth while I was trying to fumble around and get stuff done. But so far... Uh, it's burning good. I'm getting good smoke output. And let me tell you, after I tipped off the first ash, which held on, it probably would still be on there. But I don't like to, when I'm driving, to have the, you know, big, long ashes. When I'm sitting down, I'll let them just fall off. But it was about an inch and a half, maybe two inches. But as soon as I tipped that ash off and I got about two puffs into it, the flavor transitioned. The pepper kind of faded away a little bit. It wasn't, uh, it didn't go away. It just kind of faded. And I started getting like a sweet uh cocoa and leather taste now i don't know what leather tastes like i know what it smells like when it's like good oiled leather good top grade leather so that's what i associated with the the note that i was getting of good leather sweet cocoa the hay flavor still there uh i do not know why they're calling this a medium bodied smoke um let me keep it going And that ash just tipped off right there. So I'm gonna have to correct that burn a little bit. Cause it, I mean, I guess it's it's more full body to me, I would think, just because it's peppery. I mean, maybe somebody else has a better explanation of that. Or maybe Rocky was just trying to get these people that think they like, they prefer a medium bodied cigar to go ahead and buy this and like it. Mm. And then he doesn't have to make medium bodied cigars anymore. So that could be it. But this is a really good cigar, folks. Um, it does remind me of a Cohiba Siglo number five. It does. This is actually better than a Cohiba Siglo number five, in, in my opinion. Uh, but I, I really enjoy the Cohiba line. It's one of my first loves when I got into cigars 20 years ago, 22 years ago. Uh, they were all the rage and. I didn't know a whole lot, so I just really wanted to get my hands on Cuban cigars, and, you know, I traveled uh, overseas. I left the United States when I was about 18 years old and went to Asia where they were available, so I really got, oh, I was I was able to get them, and that's all you were able to get. A lot of these Nicaraguan cigars that were coming out, I believe Perdomo was just coming onto the scene. CAO had just dropped the Brazilian, and I just couldn't get my hands on them because I was living in the Philippines, but anyway, back to this thing. Uh, it's a good cigar. I'm liking it. I, I wish I had another one. I probably will. I don't know if my brick and mortars has one, but I think JR is up in Selma. Brick and mortars has one. But uh, yeah, sweet cocoa. There's still pepper there. The pepper is slight on the palate. It's got a medium finish on the palate, but the retro hell has got a good, good finish. It will, it will water your eyes, which I like. As soon as it stops doing that, I start thinking that it's getting weak. So. I'm going to continue smoking this thing. Mm. Get back on the road. I'm going to go drop off some invoices that I got. Pick up some chicks. 
so I can buy more cigars. So y'all stay tuned, and I will be back with the conclusion of this thing. But so far, I'm giving it a B plus. B plus, just because I'm more of a Connecticut Broadleaf Brazilian wrapper. I really like deep, spicy, oily, sweet, earthy flavors. I just like them really bold and, and kick you in the face. But paired with my Coca-Cola, which is what All right, so I got a phone call that cut me off last time. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Going into the just over the halfway point of this cigar, uh, where I pulled the band off, I guess it wasn't hot enough. Typically, you should wait until the burn gets closer to that band so it kind of heats up that glue so you don't end up damaging the wrapper. But no smoke's pouring through it, um, so it's still good. And, uh, you know, the, the seam right there at the burn point is kind of getting a little janky but it's still burning good it's still smoking good and again one thing I like about this cigar is it's hardly putting out any smoke when I'm not puffing on it. it's still lit still there mm. it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful thing I really like this cigar all right stay tuned I'll get into the final third and do a little uh, closing. And we're back. Uh, getting into the final part of this cigar now. You see I'm getting the wrapper's kind of coming off a bit. It's coming undone. But uh, I'm still smoking it and I'm still enjoying it. Mm. There hadn't been much change in the final third of the cigar getting down to the nub now where it's going to start burning my fingers. Normally they get real bitter for me anyway. It did pick up a more grassy flavor on the uh, Retro Hell. I mean the palette. I'm sorry, not the retro hell. So uh, I'm still getting the leather. I'm still getting a uh, like a chocolate note. It's very slight. There is it picked up a little bit of a coffee, the bitterness of a good strong black coffee, but not overpowering. The finish on the palate's kind of flat to me, kind of grassy. Mm. Again. Very reminiscent of the Cohiba Siglo 5, the Cuban uh, Cohiba. I like this a lot better. To me, this had more transition. It had more more body to it, I guess. But uh, again, it was the Robusto size, which is a 5x5 five by, five by 5 inches long. Rocky Patel, Hamlet, 25th anniversary with a Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. The Pennsylvania Broadleaf Binder, which I believe probably gave it that earthy, sweet tone, and Nicaraguan fillers. Uh, it says medium to light bodied or light to medium. I'm going to put this more up into the medium to full bodied. Definitely full strength and good nicotine. I mean, it's strong. It's a strong cigar. I got a little tobacco buzz, and this is my third cigar today. So I mean, that, and that could be it, but I mean, the last one was hour and a half, two hours ago. Hmm. Try to think if there's anything else I can say about this other than you should run out and buy it or If it sounds like it's more about your your your, your flavor palette um, If you come across it definitely try it. It's a good cigar um, That's about it for me uh, this has been Laird Mayhew that's me the cigar Sherpa. I hope you got some information off of this review if you haven't tried it maybe you look forward to trying it or maybe you yeah i'll pass because it's you know a little peppery or whatever and that's what i'm here to do i'm here i love cigars um, i'm a cigar nerd i like to talk about i like to hang out with people that smoke cigars and when we sit around we smoke cigars and we talk about smoking cigars and when we're not smoking cigars we're talking about cigars that we like or ones that we're looking forward to and blah 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 and that's that's what i do um 
hit that subscribe button because I like I said I have a, a, a good catalog of cigars new cigars that I'm working on now coming up with the reviews for them and everything and that's about it I get a little long-winded and now I don't know what to say so I'm gonna start going uh, uh, uh. so hit the subscribe button this has been Laird Mayhew your cigar Sherpa reminding you to be polite to everybody that you meet but always have a plan to stick them with the pointy end I'm out